We now look at a very important theorem in the high dimensional geometry, that's called the zone theorem. We first investigate this theorem in two dimensions. In two dimensions, the theorem says the following. Imagine a set of n lines in the plane. For example, the set of, a set of black n lines in the plane. And consider one arbitrary other line, for example, a blue line. The zone theorem is a statement about the cells intersected by this blue line. In the picture, the cells intersected by the blue line has been drawn in gray. The zone theorem says that if you look at all these cells and if you add up the number of edges and vertices surrounding these cells, the bound will be linear. Notice that this is a very powerful statement. For example, the rightmost cell in this picture has already linear complexity. This is because all the lines contribute one edge to this cell. The line, the blue line, intersects n plus one cells in this picture. And the first cell that is intersected by this blue line has linear complexity already. But the zone theorem says that, the, that all these n plus one cells, all of them together, will have linear complexity as well. We now look at one proof of this zone theorem in two dimensions. Without loss of generality, we can assume that the blue line is horizontal. Furthermore, we can only focus on the part of the picture that is above the blue line. The part of the picture that is below is obviously symmetric. The gray region will have a number of vertices and a number of edges. We can distinguish two different types of edges in this gray region. The edges that intersect the blue line and the rest. The edges that intersect the blue line are, um, are created by the lines that intersect the blue line. Since our n lines, we have at most n red edges. So the, the edges that can intersect the blue line are bounded by n. So the main part of the proof is actually to show that the, these gr green lines or the green edges are also bounded by a linear function. To, to prove that the number of gr uh, green edges is linear, we use the following argument. Let's pick one green edge. Let's say this one. And let's look at the lines that define this green edge. We use the following labeling, that A is the intersection point of the line that defines the green edge. For example, the line L prime defines the green edge at BC, and it intersects the blue line at point A. And we have uh, these vertices ordered in the following way, A, B, C, starting from the blue line. Now we look at the other point, other line, L, that defines the point P point B. The, the line L intersects the blue line at the point A2. We can have two cases. Either A is to the left of A2 or A is to the right of the A2. Let's assume that A is to the left of A2. In this case, we call the segment BC a right segment for the line L. We'd like to claim that the line L can have at most one right segment. Let's see if L can have another right segment. For L to have another line segment, it should be created by a line that starts from the left of the point L2, intersects line L, and creates another right segment. For example, this other line that starts from point A prime, intersects L at point B prime, and creates a segment B prime C prime. We'd like to show that the segment B prime C prime cannot be part of the zone. This proof is geometric, but it uses the following observation, that the lines L and L prime isolate the region that is in this, that is above these two lines from the line L. In other words, no segment in this white region can be part of the zone because the lines L and L prime isolate this from the line, from the blue line, and thus we cannot have another right segment for the line L. Similarly, we can show that there can be at most one left segment for the line L, and thus the, to the total complexity of the zone will be linear.